serious. What was the closest you've ever been to killing someone? When my daughter was 7 weeks old, I was going out to the coffee shop around the block from my house. It was a rainy day, but it stopped briefly. I put her in my Moby wrap and went out. I went and got coffee and a sandwich. On my way back home, I went to step up onto the sidewalk. Instead my toe clipped the curb. I fell forward. My daughter was thrown out of the wrap and onto the sidewalk. Luckily I was closer to the ground as I was falling as well, and the fall wasn't as far as it could have been. She began to cry immediately, and all I could do was sit on the wet sidewalk, rocking back and forth crying, as a woman was standing next to me saying, Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't have my cell phone with me because I was just running out. A kind gentleman let me use his, and I called my husband who was working around the block. He was there in seconds. We went to the emergency room. Got lots of tests done. Watched as my 7 week old daughter was placed in a CT scan, I felt so helpless. She was completely fine. It was the worst day of my life. I can still close my eyes and see her falling to the ground. Although this experience was terrifying, it taught me some important lessons. Kids are resilient, if they cry immediately they're probably okay, if they move immediately they're probably okay, you're gonna f things up as a parent, so be easy on yourself. <laughs> I operate heavy equipment, dozer excavators, these thing weigh over 30 tons on the light side for perspective. Anyways we had just started a brine pond project and had just hired some new laborers. They were as green as they come. LOL anyways, I used my two-way radio to ask them to come over to where I was to tear down a set of barricades so I could proceed. One of the laborers literally ran right up beside my machine, without making direct eye contact or radio contact, industry standard is to do so I can safe out the machine. I was backing up at the time so I was watching behind my machine. When I turned around to go forward the laborer literally two inches from my tracks. Needless to say I've never pressed the engine diesel pedal as fast as I did in that situation. If I was new to the machine or inexperienced the guy would have been an empty toothpaste troll on the ground. My wonderful husband had several brain tumors and died a horrible, painful death. After he died shortly before our 25th anniversary, five different people told me how lucky I was to be a widow and not divorce like them. There is a reason they are divorced. For real. Once a very good friend, who was a widow said, she would give anything to see her husband again, and divorced folks would give anything to never see their ex again. My mouth literally just fell open. I am so sorry for your loss that is unconscionable of them to say that. <laughs> had an abusive stepfather when I was a kid. A bit pedo creepy would do things like accidentally let his robe gap open with no underwear on, would start tickle fights as an excuse to get gropey, that sort of thing. That was nothing next to the beatings, gaslighting, manipulation and other varieties of psychological and physical torture. I hated him more than I've ever hated anyone in my life, and one night I decided to try to make rat poison tea. Turns out the rat poison we had wouldn't dissolve in the tea. It's for the best. He's still an asshole, but at least I'm not a murderer. Edit. Because apparently some folks in the comments thought I was looking for advice on how to kill people or seriously injure them. Stop it please. I'm not that kid anymore, I don't regret failing to make poison tea, I don't want to hurt anyone, and no one should be committing murder to solve their problems. Have a nice day. That's probably smart of the rat poison company guys. When I was like 14 or so I was on a swing at the park. I was going about as high and fast as that swing could possibly go. A kid who couldn't be older than 2 wandered directly in front of me as I was coming down. I slammed my feet on the ground and stopped myself about an inch away from her. My hand started to bleed from the chain, but at least I didn't drop kick a 2 year old all the way across the park. The mother saw the thing happen, but she was too far away from us to do anything in the moment, but she ran over crying and thanking me for stopping. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, what is it with kids and swings? I was 16 at a park with my sister. She was off doing something on her phone, and there were probably about 4 to 5 other families there with kids of various age. I got on the swings and was swinging there for about 15 minutes, before I decided to kick myself up higher and start swinging at peak height. Just as I swung backwards, I see a kid no older than 4 to 5 right smack in the middle of my swing, standing right in the pit of dirt where kids feet would kick up. He was just smiling and staring at me. I remember everything past that point being slow motion. I start to come down, panic, launch myself off the seat backwards, smacking my head into the gravel and knocking the wind out of me. Just as I look up, dink. I see the little kid get smacked directly in the mouth with the seat of my swing, fall over and begin howling crying. I remember the father yelling at me over and over, balling up a fist as if he's about to punch a 16 year old. Kids are fucking stupid dude, isn't it his fault for not watching his kid? I had a girl that bullied me daily in the 9th grade. She told me to kill myself almost every day, and that I was worthless. She threatened to beat me up, and even threatened that she would kill me. I went to the counselor and she said it was nothing, and I should just ignore it. No one wanted to help me. There was one day she cornered me on the stairs. They were multiple stories and I was on my way to class. She was standing next to the railing, yelling at me. Telling me how worthless I was, and I should just jump off the roof to save everyone the annoyance of knowing me. For a split second I considered pushing her over the railing. We were on the third floor, so I don't know if she would have died or just been severely injured. Regardless, I considered it for 1.5 seconds before I snapped back into reality and just took off down the stairs. I've never been a violent person with violent thoughts, but if she had gotten physical with me, I don't know what I would have done. I was 13 at the time, and I'm 25 now. I still remember it sometimes and shudder. I've never had a thought like that since. <laughs> Drunk student fell into the road in front of me. I swerved and rode off two cars and injured my passenger, I was fine. He didn't even hang around to thank me, little wanker. 
edit. The amount of edgy goons who try and make compelling arguments that I should have killed him is disgusting. I'm very very happy with how things turned out, and as stated many times it was literally the most legal and safe thing I could have done, as was decided in court. Some of you are literally brainwashed to think that your personal property is worth more than young human life, and that's honestly disturbing as fuck. I'm glad I grew up where I did and was taught the morals I was because the world scares the fuck out of me, if you think I should have killed some poor drunk kid in order to save some low-level criminal's new car. I had started a grease fire in a pot on the stove while cooking for a date. Panic set in as it was kind of big fire, only thing I could think of was baking soda, would be the only thing to put it out, because that's what they taught us in school right? Ransacked my cupboards, couldn't find it. Next best thing that came to mind? Dirt from outside, ran outside to get some dirt, told her not to pour water on it that I'll be right back. As I'm out there I hear her scream and a flash of orange. My heart sank and I froze for a second, did I just kill my date? Back inside, she's fine, fire is smaller, but still going, my walls and ceiling are scorched, I ask her what happened? She replied, she poured milk on the fire because milk is thicker than water. Okay. Anyway, no one was harmed in all this thankfully. Except my bank account when my security deposit didn't cover the damages done when I moved out later. Oh well. I do have more fire stories from that apartment. Pretty sure my landlord thought I was an arsonist. Or a dumb kid on his first time living alone, pretending to be an adult. Edit to add. Thank you for the all to put the lid on next time recommendations, I now know that's an option, like I said I was panicking and wasn't thinking straight. I do now have multiple fire extinguishers throughout my current place. They were all were gifted to me by family after I told them the story. Those were fun birthday and Christmas gifts that year. Also there was no second date, and we did not smash lol. When I was 15, I carried my 2 year old cousin down a flight of stairs, when I tripped and we fell down 3 steps. She fell on the back of her head and I on top of her. It took a split second before she started crying, and I thought she was dead. Thankfully, she was fine, but I'm so glad she didn't fell harder or over the handrail, or else she would have fallen at least 3 meters, and would probably be dead. Edit. Kinda reassuring that stuff like this seems to happen a lot, and not just a clumsy 15 year old me. Every parent could probably answer the main prompt about their own kids. Every moment from birth to toddlerhood is just constant vigilance trying to keep a tiny human from accidentally killing itself. When I was in extreme sleep deprivation the first few months I fell asleep with my infant on my stomach, or next to me on the couch, or next to me on an air mattress, etc. All situations that can kill a baby in seconds. Humans were never meant to raise babies alone, and trying to leads to over 2,000 babies per year just in the US dying from SIDS, accidents, and unsafe sleep practices. I can't count the number of times I had to jump catch my son when he was a toddler, because he just walked off the back of the slide, or unexpectedly jumped off the top of something. That little weasel could and would climb anything, then just jump or let go. Seriously, he'd climb the door frames in our house. We had to watch him like an eagle. He's 10 now, and a level 5 competitive gymnast, so I guess there was an upside to his lack of fear. No end for our fear, though. We just kind of learned to roll with it. This is an awesome development though, kinda like he knew his calling from a toddler. And props to you guys as parents, who evidently protected and nurtured, rather than scorn and scare the behavior away and create the fear for it, like some parents would do. <laughs> yep. When my son was 2 we were driving through nowhere Texas because we were moving cross country. He was eating a hot dog and started joking. I had to jump in the back seat and finger sweep it out of his throat while my wife drove. Shit was terrifying. This is my greatest fear. I'm so scared of my son choking while I'm driving alone. I've pulled over one or twice already due to bad coughing fits. I've started only giving puree in the car. Wasn't in a car, but when I was maybe 10 I did some extremely stupid thing where I tried to see how many huge grapes I could fit in my mouth until one rolled down my throat. The scariest thing about actually choking is you can't make any noise, not even coughing. I rushed down to halt to my mom, she was on the phone, back in the landline days, and made some flailing motions, thank goodness she was quick to react and knew the Heimlich maneuver. Now I have kids and needless to say grape eating is extremely supervised. <laughs> this unattended kid ran into the street as I turned into it. Didn't even see him at all because of how tiny he was. Just heard something hit my side view mirror, and that's when I saw him rubbing his head. I was working as a contractor way back in the day, and was looking for an address. I missed a turn and pulled into an apartment complex parking lot to turn around. I'm going maybe 3 miles an hour through the lot, and there are a row of parked cars to my right. Just passing them when out of nowhere a toddler wearing nothing but a diaper, darted out from between the parked cars right into the path of my car. Fortunately, I was going slow enough I stopped just shy of hitting him maybe an inch or two. No parent in sight. I got out, picked the kid up, and finally found his responsible adult standing in the open doorway of their apartment around the corner, having a smoke and chatting on the phone. They couldn't even see the kid from their line of sight, not that they were making an effort to look. Had I actually hit that kid I would have had a lifetime of trauma, and who knows what that poor kid would have suffered, all because of that asshole. I was driving to my aunt's house down a residential street, speed limit 25. I was going the speed limit and maybe a little less because the sun was setting and in my eyes. In the shade of a tree, this kid rides leisurely across the street. He had to have seen me because there were no cars parked on the street, and it wasn't a hill. I didn't see him because of the sun in my eyes and him in the shade of a tree until I was inches from his bike. I slammed on my brakes, slammed on my horn, and just barely missed the kid. He didn't even look at me, didn't acknowledge my presence, it was as if I didn't exist. Maybe he was deaf, I don't know there were no deaf children at play signs on the street. After collecting myself from the panic attack, I drove on. 
When I looked in my rear view mirror he was still in the middle of the road on his bike, this time with another kid talking to him. I assume the other kid saw the kid on the bike almost get hit by a car. Oh man, something sort of similar happened to me recently. I was in a left turn lane with two lanes of traffic headed straight, to my right. I get a green light, and this kid comes riding a bike right across the two lanes and almost slams into my front passenger door. Flipped over his handlebars going slow enough that there wasn't an injury trying to stop himself. You'd think if you saw a moving vehicle you wouldn't ride directly at it? It's impossible the kid couldn't see me too, he was riding directly at my car from 30 feet away. I don't understand how people can be so unaware when they're as vulnerable as you are on a bike. So often I think bikers and pedestrians just assume that of course the car will stop for me, what are they gonna do, hit me? As a high schooler I used to jaywalk the busy avenue in front of my school all the time under this presumption. As soon as I got behind the wheel for the first time, I instantly understood how dangerously flawed the thinking was and never jaywalked a busy street again. <coughs> my roommate wanted to rearrange the dorm room in college. We had bunk beds. I said we need to break down the top bunk into pieces take the mattress off, then the bottom spring bit, etc. She said no, we got this, we can just pick it up as a whole unit I told her I do not possess enough strength to that. She told me it would be fine. So we lift this bed whole, straight off the bottom bed pegs. The height difference between us is over a foot. So I kinder dropped it trying to even it out with her end. And shock of all shocks it ended up falling. She was backed against a windowsill. She tripped and fell back, and her head caught the windowsill, and the bed came down on her. One of the legs caught the sill, and her head ended up being trapped between the bottom rung of the bed ladder and the sill. We had to yell and get some help. If that leg wouldn't have caught the windowsill she would have had the whole weight of the bed come down on her exposed neck. Breaking her neck, probably crushing her throat and who knows what else. Honestly she was literal inches from death, we had to pause and just let that sink in for the rest of the night. The bed still got moved though. I got into a car accident because I fell asleep at the wheel. I was fine, well I fell fine. Next thing I knew, my car was going down a steep incline into a deep ditch on the opposite side of the road. Thank Christ no one was coming the other way. I was apparently going slow enough that someone coming the other direction may have had enough time to slow down and watch me crash or hit their horn, and maybe it would have woken me up, but there is the flip side that they may not have had time to react, and I could have seriously hurt or killed someone else. I also worked with a guy who would work four doubles and immediately leave work and drive five hours back home. He was about 20 minutes from home, made it through the toll booth, and woke up in the middle of the I-90, fully stopped, tractor trailers flying by him on both sides. He could have been killed, or caused an accident if someone hadn't realized he was stopped and couldn't move over a break in time. He made it 4.5 hours without issue, only to almost die or kill someone 20 minutes from home. He started sleeping after his last double and would leave in the morning after that incident. Do not drive if you feel tired. Pull over and nap if you've already started driving. Stay home, if it's not important you go out. Stay an extra few hours where you are and sleep, if possible. Edit. I'm so glad you are okay. It's a terrifying feeling to think about what might have happened. <coughs> Stepdad spit in my mom's face after not having abused her in over 5 years, so I shoved him he said he was gonna come back and kill us and ran out the door, so I followed picked him up from behind, carried him off the porch and slammed him headfirst onto the cement, and then just beat the shit out of him, while neighbors came out, got arrested, and got my first felony. Your only mistake was not taking him into the backyard, so the ass whooping was away from prying eyes. Good on you though man, my mother and little sister are the only people I'd ever do any more time for. Yeah my little brother, mom, wife, and son are the world to me. <coughs> Nurse here. Unit was very very busy, and I mentioned to a patient we needed the starter on antibiotics. Patient consented. I hung penicillin, only to find out our computer said she's anaphylactic allergic to penicillin. Incredibly, she must have outgrown her childhood allergy. Beat myself up for a long time for that near miss. Won't make that mistake again. Apparently this is really common with penicillin, the vast majority of children diagnosed as allergic to it, present no allergy as an adult. Not clear if it's because they grow out of it, or because they were never allergic at all, it's been suggested that the rash seen is actually just from whatever infection is being treated. Unless it's an emergency, probably a good idea to redo the test as an adult. Maybe a combination of both? I try now to encourage my patients to get an allergy test, because penicillin is such a frontline drug, especially if when I ask them what their reaction to it is they shrug and tell me their parents told them they reacted to it as a kid. <coughs> Mom was in an abusive relationship for about 8 years. About 6 years into it, me and my ex stopped by to pick mom up as she said the guy was drunk and she wanted to leave. We arrive and as I approach the front steps I look up into the glass door and see a pair of hands shove my mother out of view. She went fucking flying. I raged out, grabbed an axe that was nearby, dude would chop trees on property and sell bundled firewood, as the guy stepped out front and downstairs. I chased him around the perimeter of the property whilst almost blacked out in anger. A buddy of his who was staying there temporarily was on the side of the house smoking a cigarette and tackled me. Luckily, the axe didn't penetrate my chest, seeing as I landed face down with the axe pinned against me. Could've been all types of messy in two ways. Fast forward about two years and abusive guy gets into car wreck and passes away about two months after I got into car wreck on same street in a similar truck and walked away with cuts and bruises. I watched my stepdad beat up my mom for years until my mom finally got away after he shattered her cheekbone and left her pretty much bedridden for two months recovering. Everyone in his family and my mom's pretty much took his side because my mom couldn't make it to social gatherings, so they all thought she was faking it. I was the oldest child but still only about 10 when they divorced. 
Fast forward to me being about 17, and he's still in our lives due to having a child with my mom. He's at our house for some reason and slaps me across the face and walked away. I saw red. I'm tiny, but I punched him so hard in the left kidney that it dropped him. I then went to my bedroom and grabbed a bat to finish the job. Uncle pretty much tackled me when I came out of my room with the bat and took it away. He peed blood for a few weeks after that and never touched me again. Sadly he's still around and still a total piece of shit that should have died 30 years ago. When I found out my wife had been raped by her father. I would want to kill him too. Hope she is doing well. As a dad to a little girl, I cannot even begin to fathom in my mind how in God's green earth, someone could ever do that to their own child. I want to kill him and I don't even know who he is. There are some people who are just rotten to the core of their being. Like the people chopping the hands and legs of 5-6 to six year old children in Congo because they didn't collect enough rubber. In front of their parents. I would instantly kill my children if I knew it were to come to that. I can relate. My fiancé was molested by her grandfather for 10 years. She still lives at home until we can find a place, and her mom still forces her to see him. Every time I see him I want to strangle him. Can't do that because if I'm gone, who's gonna watch over her? Holy shit, that's also super horrifying. What an asshole. Same thing happened to me. It's disgusting. Makes you feel like a dirty bag of trash for life. It's horrible. I don't see how anyone could force someone to repeatedly see their abuser. It's not like her mother doesn't know what happened. We're trying to get her out as soon as possible. When I found out my grandfather raped my little sister, I was ready to murder him. I have bipolar and PTSD, which caused a lot of serious rage since it was unmanaged at the time, and I think the only thing stopping me was not knowing where he lived at the time, since I've never been close to my family. Never felt that kind of rage before or since. The old fucker seems to have poorly managed diabetes, so I'm settling with being happy he's suffering for the last years of his life. And honestly glad I never made that confrontation because I was only like 20 at the time, and I would still be in prison. Thankfully she has been able to accept her childhood trauma and not let it rule her life. I honestly think I'm more bothered by it than anyone else in my family, and have even been told I need to learn to forgive him in the spirit of Christianity, even though I'm agnostic. No. I will hate him until the day he dies, and only then will I feel true peace about it. <laughs> my older brother it was after my mother had passed away. I was working three jobs so that my older brother and two younger brothers could carry on studying and make something of themselves. Four years and I find out instead of him paying the bills, I was giving him more than enough for all the bills. With the money I was giving him it was not enough, he was taking out debt on my name. Turned out after four years of working three jobs non-stop I was in about 100k debt, with no money left in my bank account. The only reason he did not die that day was too many people got in the way. I didn't want to hurt anyone other than that crash of a shit. I hope you went after him legally, he should be responsible for that debt. You should report this. Go to the lender and the police and say you never agreed to the loan. It should get transferred into his name and if he spends time in jail so be it. He deserves it. Blood isn't thicker than narcissism. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Tell me what you dislike or love about this video so please comment below and hit the bell icon so you're notified anytime a new video is released. This is a Wecro Media production.